خالد السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام so there's already uh, one other person on here okay um, we, we can just go ahead and get started so we don't, or maybe we can make, wait uh, a minute or so but pretty much kick in so, okay. so that way we can uh, benefit from the time inshallah uh, or actually you know we'll just begin so that way we can save the time and I'll just make a quick kind of uh, go over what we did yesterday quickly inshallah <laughs> okay um, let's see so inshallah next six yeah and yeah, we see okay there was no like uh, some bad problems calling in yesterday right so inshallah like we can check into that. Okay, yeah. We can, touch base. we can touch bases anyway throughout the week and talk about some of the possible options, inshallah. Does everything sound clear? Because your voice is sounding real static. -y. Does my voice sound clear? Yeah, every, everything okay. is clear. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Are you hearing any background noise? Uh, it's uh, very little, very little. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and okay, start, right. inshallah. <clears throat> All right. And open up. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in ama ba'd. So this is the second part of the lecture. Uh, the short summary of the shaykhs, both Shaykh Muhammad Umar ibn uh, Salam al-Bazmur, hafadullah ta'ala, who is a, uh, a doctor and professor at uh, Jamit al-Umm al-Qura in Mecca. And his book is Minhaj al Salafi. So, the lecture we discussed before, we were talking about the meaning of Salafiya. And we also went over some of the Asul. There were three uh, Asuls that we talked about, three parts of the foundation of the Asul of Salafiya. Do you remember them, uh, Sheikh Abdul Mutman? Khalas, <laughs> inshallah. So, anyway, the. Uh, the three, uh, the three uh, asul, uh -huh. ikhlas, ibadat lillah, uh -huh. and the second one, so the second one, the second one was lazum, lazum jama'a, was semi wa so it was uh, holding on to the main body of the Muslims, and listening and obeying the leader, and then the third also from the Salafa Usul of Salafiyya or Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'a is that Ahl Sunnah warns against innovation and innovators. So then the Shaykh goes on in his book, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, uh, as samat as Salafiyya. So he begins to talk about the uh, traits of Salafiyya and he mentions five different traits and the first the first trait of Salafiyya he mentions he mentions that Salafis inshallah ta'ala or from the usul of Salafiyya some of the traits that are are known uh, 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 for Salafis inshallah ta'ala that meaning that they're practicing kitab wa sunnah and understanding of the Salaf as is that they the first one is the mahal Al Wala al Walbara and Duhum Ittiba Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the first trait that Salafis should possess, that this is a part of their aqidah and a part of their minhaj, is that they they hold they put Al Wala, you know, loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Al Bara in its rightful place. Meaning that it is in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and what his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves and what they hate, what they mention, what's mentioned in the Quran is hateful and what is mentioned in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Ahl sunnah their awwalah wal bara is to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with this, we'll get into some of the details of this, so I'll briefly mention these five points. And then the second uh, trait of Ahl Sunnah 
is that sha'arihim al itiba that the main that you see the signs of holding on to the sunnah and following the sunnah upon them. You'll see the signs of the sunnah upon uh, ahla sunnah. You know, they'll, they'll, you'll see ittiba Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You'll see that they're following the sunnah for the men. Some of the outward things that you'll see is you may see, you'll see the beard. You'll see that they are trying to have their pants or their izar or their thobe above their ankles because these are these are outward signs of course that their mannerisms their akhlaq and their adab adab is in conformance with the sunnah so these are some of the signs the outward signs and that the women that they're wearing the hijab and and so forth also the the third uh, characteristic of ahl sunnah is yan 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 tajhid yan ah that they are what they they are wasit that they are in all of their affairs they are they take the middle course as a sunnah takes the middle course they're not extreme in the affairs of the religion instead they practice the religion as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded and as the sahaba practiced and understood and they take a middle course they don't go excessive an extreme in worship or in in the other affairs of the religion or in their mu'amalat and or in in the way they uh, operate with other people also after that the fourth characteristic uh, of ahl sunnah is that they are uh, they are the people of ittifaq wa sabat wa istiqrar Al-Haq. The Ahl Sunnah. They're not a people who are who encourage people to disagree. Instead, they they try to to Alan. They try to agree and cooperate upon the Sunnah, and that they have sabat, that they stay firm upon the Sunnah, and that they are consistent upon the Sunnah. You don't see them one day that they are one day he has his beard and the next day he doesn't have his beard. One day he uh, he's trying to practice the sunnah, and the next day he's leaving off many, many affairs of the sunnah. Although Iman fluctuates with Ahl sunnah, we, uh, Iman fluctuate, and this is a part of the belief of an Aqidah of Ahl sunnah, is that Iman has different levels, and that we're not consistently with the same faith or the same Iman. That our faith sometimes is weak and our faith is sometimes strong. But what the Sheikh means here is that in general, Ahl Sunnah, you, you don't see that they waver every time uh, a trial and tribulation comes. They don't just switch and start practicing uh, uh, a new tariqa, you know, a new way. You know, they're not Sufi today, and then tomorrow they're Salafi, and then the next day they're with Jamaat Tabliq, and the next day they're with Aqana Muslimi. Instead, you see that Ahl Sunnah, they try to, they're consistent, and they're consistent in their practice because they're sincere and trying to practice with ikhlas and sabat, you know, with, by being firm upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the final characteristic that the Sheikh mentions is that Ahl Sunnah is that they busy themselves with establishing the religion, the Iqamat al deen And how do they establish the, the religion? So this is not to be confused with those people who, who call themselves a particular group known as Iqamat al deen but instead Iqamat al deen meaning that Ahl Sunnah as a principle, that they establish the principles of the religion, and how do they do it? The Sheikh mentions the talab al ilm al shari wa tasbihihi. So the Sheikh mentions that Ahl Sunnah busies themselves by seeking knowledge in order to practice the religion. And this goes back to, uh, for those of you who have studied the Sulu Thalatha and know that in the beginning principles that uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned the Bab in Imam Bukhari's book entitled Bab Al Qul Al Qul Kabla Al Ilm Kabla Al that the chapter of seeking the knowledge before speaking and actions. 
or before sayings and actions. And this is incredibly, incredibly important principle that it's a principle of Ahl Sunnah so that we don't enter in affairs, we don't speak about issues, we don't speak about Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala illa bil ilm except with knowledge. Important part and foundation of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So then now going into some of the details related to those those principles that we mentioned, those characteristics. So the first principle that we mentioned was related to al wala wal bara being to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, being that we hold the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as our our Imam that that we follow in totality. No one else is deserving. No human beings are deserving of following blindly and totally without exception, except the Prophet Sallallahu And the Shaykh mentions here, he says, فَلَا مَحَلْ إِنْدُهُمْ لِلْحِزْبِيَةِ أَلَّتِي تَجْعَلُوا شَخْصٍ أَوْ مَبْدَأٍ أَوْ كِتَابٍ غَيْرُ الْقُرْآنِ عَلَعْظِيمٍ وَالسُنَّةِ نَبَوِيَةٍ مَحَالٍ لِلْوَلَاءِ وَالْبَرَاءِ So the Shaykh mentions that there's no room and there's no place for his bia. And we'll explain briefly what this term his bia means. Meaning in general, uh, partisanship or to break into groups and the sects. So there's no room for breaking into groups and parties and sects uh, which uh, that hold a particular individual, that they blind follow, follow a particular individual, or they make ta'zim, they hold a particular individual to be in very, very high esteem, especially if he has, uh, he differs with the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So there's no room for that. And there's no, or any principle, or standard, or book, except the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Those are the only things that we can hold al-wala wal bara to. So this is an incredibly important principle because sometimes you even find people from Ahlul Sunnah, you know, people who uh, consider themselves Salafis or who are Salafi, who can fall into this mistake that sometimes they make al-wala wal bara to something other than the Quran and the Sunnah and the Minhaj of the Salaf. That you'll find people sometimes they'll say, oh. We're the only Salafis in this particular area. Or we're the only people from Ahl Sunnah here. Or if you don't sit with us or we don't see you in our study circle, then you're not Salafi. This is completely incorrect. And especially for those who are Talib al Elm, who know better, who have had a chance to sit with some of the Mashayikh, you don't see this with the scholars. You never see the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, and especially those major scholars. You never see them pushing people out of their study circles like that. Instead, you see that they're teaching, they're, they're teaching all the people, they're raising them up on knowledge so that they can lift the jahil and lift the ignorance from themselves and be away from ta'asim and be away from having a prejudice and uh, a preference for something other than the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. So it's very important that we know that never try to specify yourself and, and choose yourself that you are that those people that you hang around with or those people who, who only you, you take knowledge from this particular scholar, only Sheikh Fulan is the only scholar who you can take from that, but you take your knowledge from those people who are known from Ahlul Sunnah, who are known to adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah based upon knowledge, based upon sound knowledge, based upon the understanding of the Salaf. So we have to be in, uh, particularly careful not to exclude ourselves and think that we are above other people because that hidayah it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we don't make al wallah you know we don't love and hate based upon our particular clique our particular his our particular party our particular group but instead it's based upon those you seeing those people who love Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are trying to follow it and trying to understand it by how the Sahaba understood it. This is how we make our allegiance to. And so I want to mention an important fight on this point because this is incredibly important because we run into this, this problem uh, around the world all the time 
and that this is an important asul of Ahl Sunnah. So I want to mention some uh, some benefits. We asked uh, one of the Mashayikh, his name is Sheikh Muhammad, uh, Dr. Muhammad uh, Al Aqil, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Al Aqil, and he is a, a professor in Jamiat al Islamiyah in Medina. And we asked the Sheikh about what are some of the important uh, reasons for his bia that people fall into this part partisanship, and what is, you know, what is his bia? So the Sheikh mentioned he mentioned six uh, of the most important characteristics or reasons people fall into his bia. And again, his bia in general, as a general term, meaning falling into group partisanship, you know, follow uh, adhering to particular groups or sects instead of the main body of the Muslims. So the Shaykh mentioned, he said the first uh, reason people fall into this and fall into innovation and fall into breaking into groups, the first reason is that people tark a tahakam ila kitabi wa sunnah wa athar salaf The first reason is that people, they leave ruling by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the athar and the, the statements of the companions. So this is, this is the first reason people fall into this, this partisanship is that they adhere to other than the kitab wa sunnah wa fahim salaf and they begin to rule and make their uh, allegiance to other than the Quran and the sunnah. The second reason the Sheikh mentioned, which is very, very important, he said that, or, or the second uh, yeah, reason for his bia that people fall into this partisanship, is that they, you'll find that they rud al bida bil bida. So you'll find that many groups and sects and parties is that they will make a re reputation of an innovation by using an innovation. So they refute bid'ah with bid'ah. And the Sheikh mentioned a beautiful, beautiful example in this. I don't know, we're hearing some feedback. I don't know maybe if the person can push the number for, to make it mute on their, their phone and then it'll be clear for us, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so the Sheikh mentioned the example that he gave us. He mentioned that the original sect, the Khawarij, and just for those, in case people don't know who the Khawarij were, the Khawarij were a group that made takfir. They called other Muslims non-Muslims because... Ah. Is this live? Yeah, yeah this, is, this, is, this is live. So... Oh, I know. I know. Here. MashaAllah. So, the... Stop. the so the the, the, the Sheikh yeah, go ahead. Um, so you know a lot of feedback. Yeah, I think if the, if people know that they have feedback, if they can push mute, there's a way they can push mute on their. Uh, they give the the instructions with the conference call. I'm not exactly sure the number for mute, but there's a mute button, and that way there won't be any uh, extra feedback. Inshallah, Taala. So again. The, the number for feedback is star six. Okay. So star six, if people, uh, maybe they could push star six, and that way there won't be any feedback that interjects in the, uh, in the lecture, be it in the ta'ala. So then, Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, no, I was saying, Allah, Allah, you barak feek. So yeah, we're, we're just going on right up. We're, we're just going on with the with the lecture now, inshallah ta'ala. So uh, we'll continue on, bi'idnillah ta'ala. Right. So, so, so then the, the sheikh mentioned, he mentioned that the second, uh, the second reason for his bia, or that the second reason people break into groups and sects, he mentioned that, that often you'll find that the people, it's because they rud ala bid'a bin bid'a. So they refute an innovation with an innovation. And the example he gave was the Khawarij, which was a sect that made uh, takfir of other Muslims for, the, for major sins that they may have fallen into. And so that the, the Khawarij used to 
actually rud or make a refutation of the Rafida, which is a Shia sect. And they're a sect that make um, that raise of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to a station of worship. Uh, actually, some of the sects of the Rafida do this. So anyway, the Shaykh mentioned this example that the Khawarij, they actually refuted the Rafida and they went to such an extreme by refuting the bid, bid'ah and innovation of the Rafida that they made takfir of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Rafida in turn made refutation of the Khawarij by refuting them and actually raising Ali to a station of worship. So that's how you see, that's the example the Shaykh gave that some that you find the people who break into groups and sects and the Hizbiya that they were the bidah bil bidah. So actually they used an innovation, the Khawarij used an innovation of takfir, of takfir without uh, the proofs and the conditions, to refute the Rafida who had fallen into the innovation of making uh, raising Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to a station above the Prophet and even to the station of worship as some of the Rafida do. Not all of them, but some of the sects of them do. So this shows how sometimes the people of innovation, they fall into this, or this is one of their, the reasons for innovation. The third uh, asbab or, or reason for uh, Hizbiya, the Sheikh mentioned, Atahkim bil Akos, that the people of innovation, that some of the groups of innovation, that they make their judgments based upon their intellect. Instead of returning to the source of the Quran and the Sunnah, and the understanding of the Sahaba, they make their judgments and their rulings and their fit and all their judgments in the religion based upon their intellect. And we see this with many, many, uh, many different groups. And in our modern day times, we have those people who call to, to democracy, we have those people who call to different, uh, to modernization. And most of their, you'll find most of their religion is built upon their intellect. They'll say, well, no, the Sharia is not uh, applicable today in this affair. No, this, this punishment is too harsh. It's too harsh to cut the hand of the thief, or it's too harsh to stone the uh, adulterer. I think now this such and such punishment is more befitting in our time. Or there was one particular leader who died recently, who, a leader of a particular group, who used to say that hijab means the hair. So the hair is sufficient for the hijab. You don't have to wear hijab. You don't have to wear khimar. You don't have to go with the orders of the kitab or sunnah and how the, the, the sahaba understood it. But instead we say the hijab is the hair. It shows that these people, that they have fallen into a major innovation because they are ruling by their intellect instead of the Quran and the sunnah. Then the next, uh, the next reason uh, for innovation or his bia that the Sheikh mentioned, he mentioned that a lot of the sects and groups that they leave following the, the ruler, the Muslim leader, and listening and being obedient to them, and they also leave off the ulama. They leave off following the ulama and respecting and holding the, the ulama, the, the scholars in Islam, in their rightful place. So this is another trait of innovation. So if you see someone, they're speaking bad about the scholars, or they're speaking bad about the leaders, then you know that, they, that this is a trait of what many people who have fallen into hisbiya do, or many people who have fallen into innovation do. You know that this is a trait. Maybe the person is doing that out of ignorance, okay? Maybe this person needs to be educated about this affair but they've fallen into an innovation because this goes against the usul as we spoke about yesterday, some of the foundations and one of the main foundations of Salafiyyah or of Ahl Sunnah Tiwal Jama'ah or of Ahl Hadith as we mentioned is that they listen and obey the leaders and they stick to the main body of the Muslims. So this goes against the usul or the foundation of Ahl Sunnah. Also, the Sheikh mentioned as a final, as one of the final uh, reasons people fall into his be or fall into breaking into groups and parties, is that they have galu or they have um, extremism 
in their understanding the text and the Sharia. And this is what you have in the Khawarij in many of the groups, that they had extremism, they, they may have had a good intention, they wanted good, but yet they had extremism, for example, the Khawarij in their acts of worship. Okay, they were extreme in their worship, and they were extreme in applying the principles. Instead, they misunderstood the principles, and they used ayats and verses, and they did it, went to such an extreme that they made takfir of the Sahaba, and fought the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. So that shows you how someone can go astray. It's not just, as we, we know those sunnah of the deen, if we want our deeds to be accepted, that it, it's based upon ikhlas finiya, you know, that we have sincerity in our attention, and that our ibadah is in conjunction with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And this is where you find many people, they go astray. Maybe they have strong ikhlas, maybe they're sincere, but they, go, they have extremism in a particular aspect of the religion, and they misunderstand the text, and from then, then they fall into innovation because of this. And maybe an innovation that can be dangerous, like the case of the Khawarij and those Taqfiriyin, who cause a lot of chaos all around the, the Muslim world for the Muslims. But then the last uh, uh, reason that the Sheikh mentioned for his via, he mentioned that it's also people because of jahil, because of ignorance and tekabbir, and because they're arrogant. Some people, they just refuse, they refuse the, uh, uh, if, you, if you give them the evidence, they refuse the kitab wa sunnah. And this is incredibly, incredibly dangerous uh, and important for us to, to adhere to the Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al and that to not be forceful upon the people when we bring them evidence, but having, having some lean and risk, having some patience with the people and gentleness, because you don't want a person, you don't want a, a person who may, in fact, not want to reject Kitab wa Sunnah, but he might reject your way of delivering that. So you don't want him to fall into an error. Some people can even fall into kufr because they reject something that is clearly known from the religion. So it's important when giving dawah and admonishing people as well that you invite them with a good uh, char uh, character. Even when presenting the haq, you may be on the truth. You may be giving them the, the text, the nas, but you don't want to force them into a corner where they may fall into error and may actually reject the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Sahaba. So these were, anyway, the six reasons that uh, Sheikh Muhammad had mentioned that were some of the reasons for his bia. Going back to the Sheikh, uh, to Sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad ibn Umar al-Bazmul, back to his book, the Sheikh mentioned, also he mentioned a statement of Ibn Taymiyyah which is very, I thought, very, very beneficial uh, related to this, that uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, وَأَيْدٍ فَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ يُخْبِرْ عَنْ هَذِهِ فِرْقْ بِحُكُمْ أَذْنْ وَالْحَوَى This is incredibly important. Sheikh al-Islam here, so this shows us that these issues that we deal with today are not new issues that a lot of these issues, our salaf and those who came before us, had mentioned and dealt with these issues. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was mentioning here that many of the people that consider themselves from Ahlul Sunnah, or they may be from Ahlul Sunnah, but they fall into a mistake in that they also, they declare other people to, to not be a part of Ahlul Sunnah, based upon their own desires and based upon their own opinion, but not by based upon kitab or sunnah or faham salaf. So the Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah goes on to say, فَجَعَلَ طَيْفَتُهُ وَمُنْتَسِبَ إِلَى مَتْبُوعَ الْمُوَالِيَ لَهُ خُمْ أَحْلَ سُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah goes on to say that they make their, their particular group that they adhere to, they make their al-wallah wal bara to them, and they believe in that their particular group of brothers and sisters that they hang out with, or that they are close to, that they are like the only group that are from Ahl-Sunnah. 
This is incredibly important that we don't fall into this. So they make that those people who differ with them, so it might even be something, something uh, simple. Those people who differ with their view and their group, they are from Ahl Bidah. This is incredibly important that we're careful and not to fall into this. That we hold on to Kitab wa Sunnah and that you don't be quick to judge others that maybe they differ with you in opinion and maybe it's something that you are not strongly grounded in. Maybe you have a nux in your knowledge or, or the other person could have a, a misunderstanding in a particular issue. Or it could be an issue of ijtihad even, an issue where there's room for difference in, an issue of fiqh perhaps, that you don't make your awwalab wal bara based upon this principle, that you say, oh, so-and-so differs with me in the way he puts his hands upon his, uh, in, in salat, khalas, he's a muqtadi and he disagrees with my understanding. But if you go back to the books of fiqh, you'll find that ahlul sunnah, they have uh, differences of opinion maybe in that particular issue. So it's very important that we, we understand that especially in issues of fiqh or issues of ijtihad, that maybe there's room for difference in. So don't make those people who differ with you in this particular issue from the people of innovation. This is basically what Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is saying, and I don't want to prolong things... Uh, too much on that. Another faida the Shaykh of Islam said in relation to this uh, particular issue, he said, Wahada Dalal al Mubin. He said, This is clear misguidance when people do this. The in Ahla Haq was Sunnah. La yukun mitbori him illa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then again, it's going back to the Asul that Shaykh Bazmul had mentioned is that Ahla Sunnah, that they make their Al Wullah wal Bara to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is who, that is the muassisa of our da'wah. Our da'wah, we don't say, as the people say in today, oh, you're Salafi and you're, you're Wahhabi and this and that and the other. Yes, we're Salafi. But we don't make our al wala wal bara meaning that we take one particular sheikh and everything that he says, we say, no, that's the haq. It's like wahi. La. The wahi is from Kitabillah and from Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the only one whose coal cannot be discarded. And Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah has a beautiful statement. I'll read his statement, which he can articulate it much better than I can. He says, فَمَنْ جَعَلَ شَخْصٍ مِنَ الشَّخَاصِ غَيْرَ رَسُولُ صلى الله عليه وسلم مِنْ أَحَبَّهُ وَوَافَقَهُ كَانَ مِنْ أَحْلُ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعِ وَمَنْ خَالَفُهُ كَانَ مِنْ أَحْلُ بِدَى وَفِرْقَ كَمَا يُجِذْ ذَلِكَ فِي ت في توايف من الاتباع الأئمة الكلام في الدين وغير ذلك كان من أهل البدع والضلال والتفرق. نعم. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رضي الله رحمة الله عليه said in this beautiful statement. He says whoever makes a particular individual that makes his statement other than the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم makes his محبة you know his love and the fact that this statement agrees with him, he makes that this person is from Ahl Sunnah, and whoever disagrees with him is from Ahl Bidah, then this is what the people of innovation do, what a lot of the groups, the, the, the leaders, or the leaders of particular groups uh, in the past, what they used to do. They used to make their awwala wal bara to their imams and to their, and that anyone who differed with them, they would even make takfir of them, or they would consider them from Ahl Bidah. So this is incredibly dangerous, and it shows that the ulama before us dealt with these issues, that we don't blindly follow anyone, that anyone, uh, even from our, our beloved ulama, that they have to bring evidence for what they say. We don't blind follow, follow anyone. There are particular times when taqlid is, is permissible, if someone doesn't have the ability to go to the text and go to the nusus, but especially for a talib al-ilm, they shouldn't be making taqlid, and especially if you find something that goes against kitab al-sunnah. It's evident, it's not permissible, even for the, the ammi, for the person who's not a talib al-ilm from the, 
from the general people. It's not permissible to follow anyone if they're going against the evidence of Kitab al Sunnah wa Fahim Salaf. Sheikh uh, Bazmul goes on to mention that أن الأحق الناس بأن تكون هي فرقة ناجية أهل حديث وسنة الذين ليس لهم متبوع يتعاصبون له إلا رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Sheikh Bazmul goes on to mention that that there's no one who has the right uh, to call themselves from the from the saved sect, if you want to say. Uh, from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a and Ahl Hadith wal Sunnah, that no one has the right to call themselves from them, and that they make ta'asa, that they have a, a particular prejudice and a blind following for anyone except the Prophet wasallam. Meaning that we only, only follow only the Prophet wasallam's call is a call to be blind followed. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ is the only one who we can take fully 100% as, as a call to follow and the, and, the, and, the, and the action and our khudwa. You know, the Prophet ﷺ is the only one that we can make ta'asib of. So this is the call of the Shaykh and this is the principle of Ahl Sunnah that's well known that we don't blind follow anyone but everyone we look to the extent that they are following Kitab with Sunnah and the, and the understanding of the Salaf and that their goal or the saying that they have and the actions that they do is in conjunction or muwafaka with the Sunnah of the Prophet The second characteristic that the Shaykh mentioned <coughs> of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah from the signs of Ahl Sunnah is that they Sha'irihum al Iqtiba that the signs that the signs that they they have on the Zahir Wabatan is from Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah, meaning that they they follow their 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 signs are that they have Ittiba Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That when they're speaking and in their actions and the things that they do, that they are following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in accordance with how the Salaf Asadi understood the religion. And the Shaykh goes on to bring a lot of evidence, but because we're short on time, we'll, we'll try to get through the other uh, characteristics he mentioned. The third uh, characteristic the Shaykh mentioned was that Ahl Sunnah, that they're, they have wasatiyah fi jamiya sha'nihim, that they uh, that they take a middle course. Ahl Sunnah takes a middle course. This is another sign of Ahl Sunnah, is that they take a middle course in all their affairs. And what the Shaykh men, means by that, he says, Min khasais al Islam al wasatiya wa nawazin. Wa wasatiya min ahim mu'allim al deen. Yakul Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, ihdina sirat al mustaqeem, sirat al ladina anamta alayhim, ghayna maqdubi alayhim wa nadalim. Uh, so the Shaykh goes on to mention that something that is specific to Ahl Sunnah is that they take the middle course in their religion and that they are fair and they have just, that they're just in their, uh, when they're making judgments, especially making judgments on a hakharim. You know, when you're making a, a judgment even about someone who's fallen into innovation. Ahl Sunnah is the most just. And there's a beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah which uh, is in conjunction to that, I believe it, it's in uh, Akita Tawasatiyah, where he mentions that Ahl Sunnah is the most, they're the most knowledgeable, and that they're the most uh, fair and the most just from amongst the groups uh, and sects of Islam. The Ahl Sunnah, that they're the most just to the people. You know, so they're the most they're the most kind, and they look at things from an elmi perspective. They make their judgment based upon elm and sick, and based upon the uh, understanding of the scholars when they're making their judgments and so forth. And they're wasit in this. Uh, though the sheikh used the ayat in Surah Al-Fatiha, the dalil he was using, he was using that to show that Ahl Sunnah 
and Ahl Islam in general is wasit compared to the to the Yahud and the Nasara, the Jews and the Christians who are described in the ayat and they went they had a glue in their deen, that they had extremism in their deen, the Christians for they were very strong in their worship but not based upon knowledge and the Jews had knowledge but they didn't practice their knowledge. So these were forms of ghalu, these were forms of extremism by not adhering to what was prescribed for you. One sect, of course, one uh, group following their desires more. They didn't have knowledge but they were strong in their practice of their desires in, in essence because they weren't practicing according to their book. And the other group having the knowledge but not the practice. Okay? So this is why they were, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them and the Shaykh used that as evidence to show that Ahlul Sunnah and Ahlul Islam in general are wasit, that they are, they take the middle course in all their affairs. The next characteristic the Shaykh mentioned uh, is that Ahlul Sunnah, that they are, they have thabat wa istiqrar al al haq that for he says the Sheikh mentioned for Salafiyun yahdasuna ala al jama'a wa nadhul al firqa wa lakin al jama'a alati yajtami'una alayha ma kana alayhi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashabihi so the Sheikh goes on to mention that the Salafiyun ahl sunnati wal jama'a that they strictly they they try to uh, strictly adhere and be consistent in sticking to the jama'ah, to the main body of Muslims, not breaking into groups and sects, and not calling the people to break into groups and the sects and, and doing things to divide the people. But instead, they are trying to hold the jama'ah together. But at the same time, يَجْتَمِعُونَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَأَسْحَابِهِ So that Ahl sunnah doesn't go to the extreme as the groups like Akhwan and Muslimin who say, who have a very dangerous principle. Akhwan and Muslimin, their principle is that they believe in cooperating and holding the jama'at together at all costs, even at the expense of the religion. Meaning that they will say, hey, okay, the Sufis, these extreme Sufis here that... Uh, uh, worship the graves and these people who celebrate the Prophet's birthday and these people here who um, who uh, make the theater of the leaders and these people here who uh, you know believe in only establishing the Salat that this is the only important thing and leave off the importance of seeking knowledge in Aqidah they believe in making ta'awun with all those people and cooperating with all of them in the things they agree agree upon and leaving off the things that they disagree upon. But you can never establish the, the, the Jamaat al-Muslimin by this way. This is not the minhaj of the Prophet wasallam and his Sahaba and those and the Salaf al and those who follow them, the righteous predecessors that follow them. Because they warned, as we mentioned, that the third usul of Ahlul Sunnah is that they warn against Ahlul Bid'ah and, and, and the, the people of innovation and the people of ikhtilaf, the people who differ in the religion and, be, and begin new practices that weren't known to the Prophet wasallam. So this goes against the usul of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah Nam, we want to hold all the Muslims together. But that doesn't mean we compromise the principles of Islam in order to, in order to preserve the unity. It's not the unity by any means necessary. La. That's not the principle of Ahl Sunnah. And to give you a, a, a real world example that I think we experience here in the West in particular, there was a particular graduate who graduated from Jem Islamiyah who's now active in Dawa. And he made a pact with many of the groups uh, like the Sufis and and even the Shia, and there's no way we can compromise a religion and work with the Shia. I'm sorry, this, this has to be known. This goes against the foundation of the religion. How in the world can you make dawah and say, okay, it's okay that this person 
curses Abu Bakr and curses Umar and curses Ali and curses Uthman and makes takfir of him and and, and, and calls Aisha to radiallahu ta'ala anha, accuses her of zina and things like this, and accuses, if you go on their website, you'll see they accuse Umar of homosexuality and everything. How in the world can you say that we can ta'awan with these people, oh, it's okay, I can sit with a rafida, and we can, uh, we can eat together, and we can just be good friends, we just won't talk about those things. Or we can work together in affairs of the religion. There is no way. Those people are worse. Uh, they're worse than the other people who attack your, your religion. Those people believe that your blood is halal. So there's no possible way that you can sit and just unite anyone who just calls himself a Muslim by any means necessary. That goes against the soul and principles of the religion. Forgive me for running off the handle a little bit and getting off the topic a little bit, but I do just want to stress that important a soul of the, the religion, that you can't compromise. Those people are more uh, deserving of making hajr, of making, um, of cutting off, and, and cutting off, in, especially in the affairs of the religion and the affairs of the dunya, if, if need be, that than, than others, because they are more dangerous to the religion than those, some of those people who are physically attacking the religion. Though, so that's why there's no way you can compromise that very important principle, because that compromises loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes sana uh, of the Sahaba in the Qur'an. And, uh, you know, he, he praises the Sahaba in the, in the Qur'an. And, uh, and the Prophet ﷺ mentions, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, Anyway, the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet said, whoever, whoever uh, slanders my companions, uh, oh, 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 basically he warned us, a shadid warning, a very strong warning, not to slander his companions. And then one of the salaf said, whoever slanders the companions of the Prophet then he is one of the people of innovation. So the Salaf, it's known in the books of Aqidah. If you go back to any of the books, the early books that are translated, and those books that are not translated, in the books of Aqidah you'll find that that's a principle, a major principle. So there's no way that you could possibly now say it's permissible to go and sit with people who slander the companions and make takfir of them and consider them people of... Uh, people of Islam, Ahli Islam and Ahli Qibla. No, you can't. And then, and then on top of that, to Awan with him, working together with him to hopefully help the cause of Islam. So that's completely not permissible, and that goes against the usul of Ahli Sunnah, and it goes against the traits of Ahli Sunnah, as we mentioned. So Ahli Sunnah, they are continuous upon the haq, meaning that they don't compromise those principles, even when the fitna comes, even when there's times of fitna, they don't change. He's not saying one minute he's very, he has a lot of extremity and he's making tibdi of everyone, and the next minute because of the fitna, because he had uh, uh, extremism and blind following a particular sheikh or a particular individual, now he's mutasaha, now he is leaving off the principles. He doesn't want to be bothered with any of the principles of Ahl Sunnah. And this is what happens to many of our brothers and sisters, and that's why, going back to those traits of Ahl Sunnah, that you should be wasit, that you should be, uh, um, you should take the middle course. Ahl Sunnah takes the middle course. These principles, each one of them strengthens, they strengthen one another, and they complement one another. These usul and these traits of Ahl Sunnah, being wasit, you know, being, uh, uh, taking the middle course, also, being uh, consistent in your practice and not being extreme and not compromising your principles by working with those people of innovation, especially those people when they have extreme innovation. So those are some of the principles and some of the characteristics of Ahl Sunnah. Then the Shaykh goes on to mention, uh, he said, al is the last principle, which is very important. He said, أَنَّهُمْ يَشْتَغْلُونَ بِإِقَامَةِ الدِّينِ بِطَلَبَ الْعِلْمَ الشَّرْعِي وَتَدْبِيكِهِ So he says that 
another characteristic of a Salafi, of Ahlul Sunnah, is that they busy themselves with establishing the deen, the what? The talab al ilm They establish the religion by seeking the knowledge, by seeking the knowledge and practicing the knowledge. That can never be underestimated. No matter how many times we hear that principle, we constantly need to hear that and remind each other. Not everyone's going to be a big talab al ilm You know, we, we move to fawateen, and this is important as well. Ahlul Sunnah move to fawateen, Ahlul Sunnah has different levels, and Ahlul Bidah move to fawateen. Ahlul Bidah has different levels. There's some people who are knowledgeable uh, amongst Ahlul Sunnah, like the ulama, and you have talab al ilm talab al ilm and they have different levels, and the scholars have different levels, and then you have the awam of Ahlul Sunnah. They're still from Ahlul Sunnah. Those people who are not even talab al ilm but yet, he holds on to the principles. He knows enough about the religion. He knows the principles in a soul of Ahl Sunnah, and he's trying to follow it. So Ahl Sunnah has different levels, and Ahl Bida as well has different levels. And depending upon the their level is how we uh, how we work with them, or work against them, or stay away from them. All those all those things depend upon their level of inter- innovation and the harm that they may pose to to us. Going back to this usul, again, we establish the deen how we establish based upon knowledge by seeking the knowledge. And in this, ref- and in this, uh, this regard, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then know لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ and seek forgiveness and, 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 and basically seek my forgiveness. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear for us, that knowledge. It's a command for knowledge. And it's a command for, for knowledge, seeking knowledge of what? Of Tawheed. Of Ikhlas Lillah. Kalimat al Ikhlas. La ilaha illallah. That there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is a commandment from Allah to seek the knowledge and the knowledge and al nafiyah, beneficial knowledge, meaning the knowledge of Tawheed and the knowledge of the religion. And in this regard, the Prophet sallallahu has said, "Men yurid Allahu bihi khairan yafqahu fitin." The Prophet sallallahu has said, "Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him knowledge or wisdom of the religion." So that is that that shows that when Allah is giving someone, increases him in his knowledge and practice and practice that. He is favoring upon him. And this is a sign, this is one of the signs that Allah loves this person when he increases him in knowledge. And the ulama, a lot of times they say the mafhum of this hadith, you know, the understanding of this hadith is men, men la yuridu Allah, who, men la yuridu, read Allah who bihi khayran, lem yufiqahu fiddin. That the one who Allah doesn't increase in knowledge, it shows that he doesn't uh, you know, it shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love this slave as much or that he doesn't love this slave. If this slave doesn't increase himself in his, his, his knowledge of the religion and his knowledge and his practice. So this is what the ulama, they, they often use this and say that this is the understanding of this, uh, of this uh, hadith. So it shows us that that is another sifat and characteristic of Ahl Sunnah, and that which distinguishes them from other groups and sects, is that they are, should be concerned about knowledge, can should be concerned about Talib al ilm in order to increase their practice of the religion, increase their understanding. Yeah. I know we're, we're running short of time, and alhamdulillah, we've come almost to the end. Uh, the Sheikh then goes on to say, he begins to talk about what the remedy. He says, Islam and the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So he's already established for us those, the main usul, the Salatha usul we mentioned, the first asul being what? Being Ikhlas Lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, you know, Ikhlas in, uh, in Ubudiyah, you know, in, in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in all acts of worship, that being the main and the first asal of Ahl Sunnah, the second one being what? Being that um, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a, that they, uh, uh, 
remind me of the second asul. The second asul is uh, Luzum al Jama'a is that Ahl Sunnah holds on, tries to hope and, and keep the unity of the Muslims and that they hear and obey the leaders. And then the third asul from uh, the third asul from the, that uh, Salatha Usul is that Ahl Sunnah warns against innovation and innovators. And then so the Shaykh in his treaties he begins to talk about what is the rectification, uh, what is Ahl Sunnah's prescription for the rectification of the affairs of the Ummah. Okay? Because we see that a lot of the groups that they have their own minhaj or their own way of what they feel rectification. Some people say, uh, you know, for example, Jamaat al Balik, they call the people to Salat. So they say, don't discuss any other affairs. Don't uh, dwell into even to Akita. We just talk about Rububiya a little bit. But our main call is only to the Salat. Okay, so they believe the rectification is by establishing the Salat. Ahla Takfir, Ahla, like the, the people who have the, who are been affected by the Khawarij. They believe that rectification of the Ummah is what? Is by making takfir to the leaders and speaking about the leaders and changing the leadership. Okay, this is what the Khawarij and the Prophet Sallallahu said about the Khawarij. He said what? Al Khawarij hum kilab al nar. He said the Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. Subhanallah. So obviously we don't want to take their prescription. Uh, and many other groups and sects, they have a rectification. They have a way and a means that they think to solve our affairs that a process that we should go through. But Ahl Sunnah, as the Sheikh mentions, he said that أن الموضوع الإصلاح الأول والأساس هو إبادة الله وتوحيده. So he says that for Ahl Sunnah, the rectification of the Ummah starts with going back to the origin and the basic the basis of the religion, which is إبادة الله وتوحيده. He is going back to إخلاص لله you know, the sincerity in all acts of worship and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the shaykh goes on, he gives us, uh, he brings the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, well, look at the asana fi kulli ummatin rasulin and ni'budullah which tanibu ta'gud. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he, we have sent for every community a messenger. And what was the messenger commanded with? And na'budullah and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which taribu ta'ud and staying away from those things that are worshipped besides Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Okay? So that is the Asafi religion. So the Shaykh went on to use that and then he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal ila Yemen he said innaka إِنَّكَ تَأْتِي قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَحْلَ كِتَابٍ فَلْيَكُونَ أَوَلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ إِنْ تَشْهَدُوا إِنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَفِي رُوَائِتِ الْأُخْرَى إِنْ يُوَاحِدُ اللَّهِ So the Prophet ﷺ said Mu'adh ibn Jabal with the kalimat al-ikhlas, with tawheed. This is what we begin our da'wah with. This is the minhaj and the islah and the rectification, the ahl sunnah That not only do we think this is a rectification for no, for non-Muslims that we start with calling them to Tawheed, to the oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also with Muslims. That also this is a rectification of the Ummah. Because you'll see that in many of the Muslim countries, the Muslims are on innovation, and the Muslims worship graves, and the Muslims worship their, uh, their, their, their ancestors, their grandparents. You'll, you'll find even in places where people seek knowledge. There's a place in Hadramaut, and the Sheikh that uh, Sheikh Abdullah Mar'i, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he is one of our mashayikh in uh, Merkaz of Sunnah in Hadramaut. But him and some Tulab al they went to visit a place in Hadramaut where the Sufis have, it's a Merkaz called Dar al-Mustafa. And this is a place Hamza Yusuf sends people to go study. This place, the people on Jumu'ah, they go. And they go to the, to the graves every Jumu'ah. And they go... They don't advertise this on their website, but instead when you get there, you'll go and they'll go to the graves and then they make dua to the, to the, to their shiyukh, to the, their supposed righteous people from the past. So this shows you the danger 
that Ahl Sunnah we call to Tawheed, and Ahl Sunnah we stay away. The sifat of Ahl Sunnah is that they call to knowledge and they call to the worship of Allah Tabarak wa Taala alone. The Sheikh mentioned as the second principle that Ahl Sunnah sees as Islah or rectification for the Ummah. Ahl Sunnah. Welcome. This service is provided by freecast.com. You entered 27151. This conference is being recorded. There are five other callers on the call. At any time, press star 4 for conference instructions. Please announce yourself. Yes, alaikum. Sorry about that. Okay, it's about that time. I think it ends anyhow, I believe. Uh, uh, so I was going to say, you know, we can follow up next week, inshallah, um, at 6 o'clock. Yeah, that'll be better for us, inshallah, Tana. Start earlier, inshallah. Because I think we're over, and uh, yeah. it's almost time to break time. No. What's, uh, 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 you're out. No. Well, what's the brother's name that gives the class? It's Khalid. 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 Barakallah. Thank you. Barakallah. This is, uh, this is, this is, I called the brother Hassan from Portland. Okay. And, uh, I put him on the freeway so that he can, he can actually benefit. My this is, uh, this is Hassan. Hassan. This is Khalid. And, uh, Hassan, this is Abdul Muslim. Abdul Muslim, you, are you here in Seattle? Abdul Muslim. Abdul Muslim. Abdul Muslim. Yeah. Abdul Muslim. Yeah. Yeah, he's the Yeah. 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 Y